Apollo 13. It was the third moon journey, and the astronauts were Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert. As their Saturn V rockets soared upwards, neither they nor Mission Control knew that a few mundane factory errors had turned the ship into a time bomb. Everything was fine until 55 hours and 62,000 miles into the flight. The astronauts were a quarter of the way to the moon. It was, incidentally, April the 13th, 1970. On the ground, everything about the flight was being watched by somebody. Cy Liebergott was watching the oxygen tanks in the service module, which supplied power and air to the spacecraft. Liebergott decided that the oxygen in the tanks needed to be stirred, agitated, and he asked the crew to turn on the fans that would do that. And that's when the factory error struck. Inside the tank were damaged wires. An accident was waiting to happen. When the crew switched on the fans, there was a spark and the tank exploded. The explosion had blown away the side of the service module and vital gases poured uncontrollably into space. A routine mission had become a life or death struggle and three men's lives now hung in the balance. Calculating furiously, Mission Control discovered that the astronauts might have just enough power and air to get back home. But to save these precious resources, they would have to shut down their command module and move into the smaller lunar module. The module would now never land on the moon, but it might save their lives. Apollo 13 didn't have enough power to just turn around and come home. Mission Control needed the moon's gravity to slingshot the spacecraft back to Earth. So they had to go around the moon a place they would now never set foot on. With power reduced to a minimum, conditions inside the lunar module were bleak and miserable. I've described it as being uh, out in the woods and you don't have adequate clothing on, you don't have a jacket, and you sit out there for uh, several days, in our case, uh, four days, uh, you're, you know, you get pretty chilled, and uh, that just wore me down. And they, uh, as I found out later, a staph virus that was on board uh, got me, and I ended up with a lower uh, urinary tract uh, infection as a result. Hey, Mayor, uh, we're starting to uh, go ahead and button up the tunnel again. In mission control, anxiety rose as Apollo 13 approached Earth. Stand by, 13. We're looking at it. They start off very diplomatically saying, uh, gosh, Houston, uh, these are not the exact words, but basically the context, gosh, Houston, uh, how's that entry sequence coming? Uh, and then, you know, a few hours later, called it, uh, how's the entry sequence coming? At one point, I remember, <laughs> they said, uh, hey, Houston, uh, you know, uh, we're looking out the window, and uh, Earth's getting pretty big. To start the return, the astronauts had to go back into the command module defrost, and power it up. As mission control began dictating the necessary but very complicated list of instructions to the crew, an unexpected problem arose. They started reading it up to the crew, and I think it took like two hours to read this to the crew. And in fact, the crew had trouble finding enough paper to write it down on. You know, and that, that thought never occurred to me that we were building such a complicated sequence that was going to save this mission and save the crew, and the key resource might be enough paper to write it down on. Now came re-entry itself, the most hazardous part of the trip. First, the crew had to jettison the crippled service module. When they backed away from the service module, they could tell that the whole side of the service module had been blown off. Seeing the extensive damage caused by the explosion raised fresh fears. What else might fail when Apollo 13 attempted re-entry? The big issue then was the heat shield, right? There was no way to understand what the heat shield had done. The best way, only way to test the heat shield was to hit the atmosphere. When we went into the blackout period, on entry, it started right where it was supposed to start. And normally we could time those things, those blackout periods, 
within a matter of just a couple of seconds on start and a couple of seconds on when they would come out and we could make radio contact. And you could have heard a pen drop in here. Only the Capcom kept calling. Yeah, Apollo 13, this is Houston. Nothing. I noticed in that period nobody was looking at each other. We were all kind of looking straight ahead because we all had it in our mind that we've come this far and that damn heat shield must have been damaged and they burned up. It's been two minutes now from time of drogue deployment. Two or three minutes after they should have uh, come back into contact, Capcom kept calling Apollo 13, this is Houston, finally uh, Jack Swigert said, hello Houston, this is Apollo 13, everything's fine here. And everybody just, you know, <laughs> oh God, it was such a relief.